to another episode of Sunil's View, ladies and gentlemen. So, hope you're having a good time. Hope you're spending a good time with your family and friends. So, today I got an interesting proposition for all of you guys. So, as you know, the world's number one motorcycle company is the Ducati. And As you can say, I'm also a big fan of Ducati. I'm trying to buy my new Ducati bike. I'm struggling hard for money. So, if you hit the subscribe button, it may help me a lot to, you know, uh, do more videos and to get a lot of views from people so that I can achieve my dream. So, please do hit the subscribe button, hit the like and share it to all of your friends. So, today's video is all going to be a great history lesson and how the uh, well-known Ducati brand that is right now has started its age and how it was first uh, not a bike company and as you have seen from the intros that I posted before you have seen that it was not a Ducati company a uh, Ducati bike manufacturing company at start so let's get on this video right now so okay the Ducati history so the Ducati bike company was not a bike company when it was first started so when the Ducati company was first started, it was started by three brothers. Let me let me put the correct names of the guys who started the company in line below. So the three names are Adrino, Bruno and Marcelo. They are the three entrepreneurs who started the first Ducati name industry. So the first that the thing that they did was they built radios. So it was just like radio for, but for your ears. So it was the olden mode of Twitter, right, for the years. This was before World War One, so this was around 1926-25, that way. So, if you continue from that part of the vlog, so, the first thing that they did was, they designed a whole new system of radios, only the elite people can buy. So, here's a, here's a picture of the Ducati first released radio. So, then, after some years, you may heard it, the world war came. So the world war came, the man, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Hitler himself ordered the Ducati company to build them radios for the military. You know, because the military used radios to understand what is happening between the uh, enemy state countries and how they are planning to attack them. So they started building the three entrepreneurs, they were basically entrepreneurs, they started building radios for military and stopped it for commercial purposes. So they built the heavy radios that the military, uh, what to say, the military used it for both World War One and World War Two. But sadly, this happened. So what to say? What to say? So they formed the first radio company known as Scientia Brevetti Ducati. So this was a very long name. I'll put it down in the screen which you can see now. So after that. Uh, they built a factory in 1935 for, you know, for mass producing the radios to military as well as commercial purposes before the World War One and Two before Hitler said, and this was the most world's technologically improved, or to say, improved facilities at that time during the years of 1935, because there were no such radio stations like, uh, sorry, there were no such radio manufacturing plants like that in Italy at that time. So they were the first to produce the mass manufactured radios and over 7000 employees were uh, you know appointed for the manufacturing of this uh, radio so after that during the world war 2 in 1944 a bomber b22 from The Allied state destroyed the Ducati factory for the full loss. So Italy was now nothing. It was no Italy, no manufacturing. As you can see now, Italy is the biggest manufacturing in automotive. You can see uh, Ferraris, Bentleys, Aston Martins, Lamborghinis. All of all of them are manufactured and imported from Italy. Italy has a great taste for what to say. It has a great taste for automotives and other appliances also. Italy is best for cakes, you know that, right? So, after that, it, the legacy started, right? So, the Ducati was in a dire stress and needed some capital in order to start its new factory. So, instead of making radio, which were they used to, uh, because they had a physics degree and knew how to do electronics and stuff, but they started, they needed 
currency to start that project. But so they looked into other markets such as motorcycles, cars, and other stuff besides radio. And they found out that the people that were in Italy during these times needed a heavy motorcycle that can, you know, that is fuel efficient and also that can do a lot of miles in a single tank because you know the roads were bad because of the bombing and it was in a dire stress the country so they first introduced themselves in the motorcycle market as as also they didn't know how to do ma motorcycles but they got it in inside the motorcycle and started the motorcycle brands uh, and the first the first 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 the first motorcycle that they designed was known as the Gucci Allo Gucci Allo motorcycle in Italy it was known as a little puppy in English. So it made a 1.5 horsepower and made about let's say 180 miles per gallon in a single tank of fuel. So after that um, they designed the second bike named the 60 Sport, which was a 60 cc 2.5 2.5 horsepower engine and reached a 40 miles per hour average. So it didn't have any mileage sort of thing. So this was the second time when the Ducati started making motorcycles, and from there it has developed till now, which is making the beautiful bikes as you can see from the next trailer pictures. So after that, yeah, let's see. This was in the year. The when after all this happened, there was a race known as Moto Giro, which was in Italy known as the 300 mile race. So Ducati needed a heavy racing championship in order to start their own Ducati manufacturing plant, motorcycles, Ducati motorcycles. So they went after a man, the great man, the great guy who designed bikes till now. Uh, his name was Fabio Caglio the great guy as you can see from the next slide now this guy is the base this guy is the head this guy is the design engineer and marketing of Ducati which he produced some of the greatest international and you know the greatest beautiful masterpieces of Ducati in the world so let's see they went on the 300 mile per hour they won it and then after some more, more races in the Moto Giro Fabio Teglio was appointed as the chief director of Ducati. You got the skills, kid. The skills to pay the bills. I need you to build me a race bike. Yes, sir. I can do that. Also, Ducati is on the verge of closing, so we're really counting on you. Wait, I just started to work here. Are we closing? No, we're not the closing. You just said that we are closing. We're not the closing. We're fine. We're rich. Arrivederci. So, after that, some some time passed and he first did the grand bike known as the Grand Sport Margiana, which was from the sauce, which was the hottest sauce in the world, the Mariana. So he got the idea from that sauce and he said that this bike would be like a hot sauce, which is very hot, very high revving engine and it was the first bike to achieve a top speed of 125 miles an hour. So he built the after some time he built the same motorcycle which did 120 miles an hour it was a 100 cc motorcycle and he upgraded that 100 cc motorcycle to 120 c 25 cc motorcycle which is this one so after that uh, in a racer named Juliana Maggi who raced the bike in a Moto Giro in Italy so the race full form known as Moto Giro da Italia it was also Let's say it was like a Isle of Man TT or the Daytona 500 like that races, it was in Italy. So the name was it like that. So he took the 125cc, the Grand Sport bike, the, no, the Mariana and he did a 125 miles an hour and he won the first place in the race. So after that in 1956, he built the greatest engine of them all. The engine that is still now today built in the latest models but you know like uh, let's say like it's it's like what to say um, kind of uh, remodified from the olden days so this was known as Desmo Dreamic so the first 
Desmodrinic Aegid was built in the 1956, also known as the Tri Albero. It was the pride and joy of Ducati. He, let's say after that, ah, okay, after that, and the difference between the Desmodromic engine and the normal valve spring engine is this, which you can see. Now, to understand why Taglioni used desmodromic valves in his engine design, you first need to understand how the more common spring-returned overhead valves work. Valves are opened by a cam and closed by a return spring. In the early days of engine design, motors would blow up due to valve spring failure. This was a problem early on when the metal used to make springs was crappy. Instead of using springs to return valves, a desmodromic system replaces those springs with cam lobes and collars. It forcibly pulls the valve to close it, perfectly timed with the rotation of the crankshaft. So why is that better? Well, for one, you don't have to worry about the springs failing and your motor blowing up. The second thing Desmo systems avoid is valve flow. It's inefficient and you lose power. And Mr. Fabio was a racer at his core and he was always searching for Let's continue. After that part of the desmodromic engine which was developed, in 19, let's say 1956, uh, he took it, the same driver took it to the Swedish Grand Prix which was conducted in Head Roma which made at about 19 horsepower with a high, uh, high revving engine of 15,000 RPM which was very highest revving engine in the year 1959. So, after that, some time later, in the year 1959, they appointed a new test driver for Ducati named as Mike Haywood, a 19 year old boy who was very good in racing and he know a lot about bikes and his dad who was also a great racer and also a great fan of Ducati, he just went to the Ducati showroom and asked Ducati to build his son a new bike, which the three brothers accepted. But on a point of view, they said that we have to buy the 2000 bikes which we built now for purpose of the sales. So, as a cool dad and also a dope dad of Mike Helgood, he said, okay, I'll buy the, what to say, I'll buy uh, the 2000 bikes that he built. And then it was the start. The bike 750 GT was born. And after that, uh, two, uh, sorry, not the 750 GT, it was known as the 250 Desmo, which you can see in the next slide now. And asked them to build his son a bike that would dominate the competition. And they said, okay. But for it to be financially worth it, you have to buy 2,000 of them. Stan said, sure, put it on my Oxfordshire Express. And 2,000 of the newly designed 250 Desmo twins were made. Not only was Stan... The 250 DC were also born. And in the 1960s, it was the fastest selling bike in the world. And all of them were 250s Desmo. And in the year 1964, the Ducati developed the scrambler. The off-roading edition that you see now is just the remake of the old, uh, what to say, the old scramblers in the year 1964. And after that, in the 1964, the same year after the after the introduction of the scrambler, they made another bike named as Mark One, which was also the fastest production bike with a 350 cc single cylinder engine, and which was and which was. In that time, the Harley Davidson developed as a city cruiser and also a cruise bike and a city rider with heavy horses. So the Ducati also again in dire strait needed a new bike to set up, uh, you know, to set up the market against the Harley Davidson. And then they went to a company known as called it the Apollo. Ducati was approached by the Berliner brothers to create a rival bike to sell to police departments in the US. He came up with an air-cooled 1257cc two-valve V4 that made 100 brake horsepower. Almost Berliner, who was the brainchild of uh, Ducati's next adventure cruisers named as Apollos. So, in the year 1959, the tires that were built that time were not strong as the tires that are built now. So the tires that are built now, uh, namely the tires that are in Bucati, cars, oops, sorry for that, uh, Ducati bikes, uh, 
the tires that were made that time were very bad in quality and uh, the power that was sent to the bike was at most 150 100 and sorry 115 horsepower and the tire that was put in them was not capable of handling that much power that that guy you know that uh, the power of the bike that made so again the fabio tangilioni had to detune the bike to 85 60 and then the bike was out of market because it was less underpowered than the harley davidson bike so and then they dropped the idea and berliner was gone so again in 1969 and the ducati was in dire stress because the japanese market such as honda yamaha and all these companies were bringing up their new the new 750cc bikes and in order to stay afloat the ducati also needed to bring up their own set of 750cc bikes and then they went again to the mastermind the great magician of the ducati company tegio fabiglioni to design them a new 750 bike to keep up with the japanese market japanese bike market and hence the new 750 gt was born which you can see Taglioni, their lord and savior to design such a bike. The 750 GT used Taglioni's new L-Twin. They call it that because of the 90 degree angle between the cylinders and also to differentiate itself from Harley's V-Twin. The 750 GT's stiff frame and quality suspension gave the bike an edge over other super bikes, but it's still... So Taglioni went and developed a Desmo version of the bike, the 750 Amola Desmo. And in 1972, at the running of the Amola 200, after some time in the same year, there was a race known as the, uh, what to say that, I'm not sure what the name of the race is, but if you see in uh, Wikipedia, you may see that it was a race known as the Grand Prix, which was the same, and two riders from England and Italy took the same bike, 750 GT, that was the bike, and made it, and Tangeliano also made a, you know, like a Desmo, this small bike of the 750 which had a front flaring like this and he took it to the races the two riders from england and italy took it to the races and pretty much what from now on ducati was started to making started making great bikes and great editions from that you can also see they made many bikes like the daytona the diana and all other bikes which were made in the usa and also uh, other parts of the world so and uh, let's see what next, what next. After what? some years, 1973 came. <sighs> the guy which was driving, the test driver which was di driving for Ducati for a particular of 11 years, the Mike Halewood guy the, and the dad who bought the 2000 bikes, the 750 GT, uh, sorry, the 250 Desmo, he retired from Ducati after 11 years of test driving the bikes. So, when he retired, he first then went to the Ducati and asked I am going to drive the last seasons of the races and I am going to bring a huge victory to you guys so again the Ducati brothers went to Mr. Fabio Tangilioni sorry Tangilioni and built the new bike which was known as the F1 and they took it to the 100 hours of world championship super bike champion and they won it okay so after that the 96 and the famous Ducati bike was bought by Mr. Fabio Tangilioni, the great bike named as the Ducati, which still now many of the people love and it's also a collector piece, a good good bike, a good conditions of Ducati 9 wood 6, which still selling today in our automotive markets, will fetch you up a high price of at least one million dollars in pristine condition. So and the Ducati after that, the Ducati 916, the Ducati 918 was born and after this Ducati had a series of winnings in 6 world championships, 65 pole positions, 115 races and 306 podiums which was driven by the latest Ducati driver Casey Stones after Mr. Mike Halewood retired after 11 years of Ducati test drive. So now Casey Stone was the uh, current then Ducati driver of this kind of new kind of bikes and then after that the 900 Super Sport was born the 750 GT and the Desmo editions were also formed and then after that then came a huge bang in the Ducati industry in order to keep Ducati afloat 
they are they needed to sell or at least a new type of bike which was easy by the Ducati riders to ride in city as well as the highways. Then the new class of street naked bikes were found. It was known as the monster. As you can see now, I am having the same bike, a 1x18 scale on my table. So this is the next bike which was developed by Mr. Fabio Caglioni. And then the new series of monsters were born. The main design of the Ducati monster was not only by the design of Mr. Fabio Caglioni. It was also a design of the great man named Miguel Angel Gulzioni. I know it's a hard name to produce, but... In 16 came out, another bike was released that helped cement Ducati as one of the most beloved motorcycle brands across the world. El Mostro, or The Monster. Designer Miguel Angel Galuzzi took inspiration from the street fighter bikes of the 80s when riders would remove their crashed fairings to reveal the frame and engine. They also came to produce, but I'll put, you, I'll put a name right now. And basically, the monster was not a new design. It was basically a, you know, a garage find of other Ducati bikes like the 850, the 750, the Desmo, the GT, and the 250 Desmos also. So it was a mix of all the bikes. You can see the frame was from a 250 GT Desmo, the front body was from another bike and you can also see that uh, the front fairings and other parts of the bikes were made from different parts of the other olden bikes that were in the time limit that time. So after that, the new CC, like I told you again, the naked street naked bikes were formed. They were super sport, fasty and they were agile enough to cut into corners like a cheetah. So, and then what and also in the year 2002 the, the changes happened in the motorcycle moto gp races because till that time all the ducati bikes were two strokes and the rules of the industries were no two strokes only four strokes the, so the ducati was banned from 2002 to some years because of these problems but still after that Ducati found fame in the off-road industries, off-road uh, racing industries like then they developed these two bikes, the Hapa Motor and the what to say the adventures of adventure bikes. Uh, let's see what was the bike is Tada 126 here. The greatest adventure bike that all youngsters of the today's generation love. And after that in 2003 they have a motor release which was this one. And in 2006 and in 2007 a new rocket was born the 1098 a new rocket was in the shape of its gravity and it was a fucking insane bike which drove and which won 12 of the races and it also came with a world title and then after that it also came the 1198 cc the 1199 cc the ducatis and they also built a new and lighter platforms of the 1198 and the 1199 CZ bikes and they named it as the Super Leggera in Italy. So in Italy the Super Leggera in English means as a light white. So all the body parts like the front fenders as you can see the bike is right here. So this is not the bike, I'm just explain. The front fenders, the seats, the hull and all the back parts were made of carbon fibers as you can see from the next. Uh, uh, next uh, slide from now on that the 11898 were considered to be one of the most technologically advanced motorcycles on the planet so in 2002 and 2007 there were not many bikes that had traction control uh, ABS control uh, drift control and also power wheelie controls you can actually assign all of them to stop the power of wheelies that was coming out so that was firstly introduced by Ducati and after some time Ducati was fallen down and the brothers had to sell the Ducati bikes and the Ducati bike was then sold to another kind of a two motorcycle mag magnets and uh, let me tell the name okay after the Ducati 1198 also guys on uh, mother uh, gee, on important note the 1985 itself the Ducati company was you know kind of bought back by the founders of two manufacture companies and also run by two brothers the manufacture company was based out of England known as Kagiba 
owned by the two brothers. They bought it and they are the persons that developed the 1198, the 1098 and the 1199 CZ which was considered to be the world grand success of Ducati. Remember, this was Italy in the 1980s. They were still under communist rule and Ducati was a state-owned organization and the state of Italy was no bueno. Ducati needed capital to stay afloat or else they'd have to close their doors. Lucky for them, there was another Italian company looking to save Ducati's ass. Chigiva. Chigiva was a young motorcycle company owned by the Castiglione brothers. When Chigiva bought Ducati in May 1985, they knew the Japanese manufacturers were already ahead of the game. And as you can see now, the Ducati is the world front, front line of bike companies and also my dream as I told you before. So please hit the subscribe and share and like this video uh, for the kind information. And also after that, then after few five years, six years later, the next seasons of the Super Leggera bikes was born and also the last edition of the V-Force bikes which the engine was built out of a Desmos DC engine which was a uh, Mr. The Great Guy designed Mr. Fabio Taglioni and it has been in the bike for over 60 years guys can you imagine the 60 years of the same engine design that started the Ducati bikes is still now in the Ducatis still making them. but not like the old days but like a refurb refurbished version of the bikes and in 2020 the last Panigale V4R was built also, the, uh, the other models of the Panigale, like the 998 Panigale V4S, the V4R, and the lesser CZ bikes of 900 CZ and 1000 CZ were brown. And then, at uh, last, the Panigale V4R was bought to the future of 2020. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
if you are a motorcycle guy and motorcycle girl that you are watching this video and if you are thinking of buying the Ducati bikes and if you are in a dire stress that which uh, that if I should buy the Ducatis or not whether it is reliable or whether it is a good bike as a resale value all this nonsense shit let me tell you one thing Ducati is the number one bike company they have made it to this day with their hard work the creativity the ingenuity of the three brothers that started the Ducati company the let's say they started as a radio company you can see that guys they started as a radio company and they built it to this point that is now standing the Ducati the three brothers named the Adriano the Bruno and the Marcelo they didn't they didn't have the knowledge to build bikes they basically built radios and one of them was a physics so as you can see the bikes that are developed today has a long history of going they built the radios and they started as a bike entrepreneurs in the starting years of world war after the world war 2 and world war 1 and they started from scratch so you can see the how much they had the willing to develop a greater bike that today now stands as the leading company leading motorcycle company in the world so if any of your bike girls or biker men uh, are watching this please buy the Ducatis they are the greatest bikes in the world and there is nothing much to say but to end this video so I'll catch you with another history another channel another video in the ch in the upcoming videos I'll try to make it more interesting as possible and also I'll add a lot of more stuff in it like this video will do and if you have not seen my last video you can go down in the description box and you can click the link to watch the last video basically I risked my life in this time in this pandemic situation right now and I went out to see how the world was doing and how the world was capable of accepting the fate that is happening now and you can see how India is progressing in the words of the kind, the great Mr. Prime Minister Modi ji and how the world is outside right now. So, thank you for watching. We'll meet you with a brand new vlog from tomorrow. Until then, it's your Sunil signing off from India.